evening and welcome to St Peter's Morning Prayers. This Friday, one week on from Good Friday, we've had the resurrection, we've had a week. Let's come to the Lord together. I'm married to Mark, uh, the curate at St Peter's, and I'm sitting in my kitchen in Bellamy Road, hoping that you can hear me properly because we've had lots of problems with the microphone. Grace mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to start by reading Psalm 115 from the New International Version. I'm going to read the first verse and then from verse 12 to the end. <coughs> Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the human race. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. This is a wonderful psalm. The ending is so interesting. The way that the psalmist speaks about God's blessing and how he blesses those who fear him, small and great alike. And then he goes on to say that the heavens and the earth belong to the Lord and that we are the ones who extol the Lord now and forevermore. Let's start with a, the prayer time, with a prayer of blessing and thankfulness. When Emily and Pete did the prayers the other day, Emily spoke of the praises of God's people all over the world. They're still praising him. Let's praise him together. Father God, we thank you that you are in your heaven, that the world belongs to you. We extol you, we praise you forevermore. We thank you that you have given us this earth. We thank you for this beautiful morning, for the signs of spring, the flowers, the blossom, the sunshine. We thank you that you are gracious and good. And most of all, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that Easter Friday, Good Friday, was followed by Easter Sunday, and that we live in the light of your resurrection, Lord Jesus. We pray that we would know the comfort of your Holy Spirit this day. In your name, Amen. The second reading is taken from the book of Corinthians. This is uh, continuing where we've been reading this week in 1 Corinthians 15. The passage in my Bible is entitled The Resurrection Body. And I'm going to read from verse 35 to the end of the chapter, simply because it's really difficult to stop in the middle of this wonderful passage about resurrection and about the sting of death being taken by the resurrection. So 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 35. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, 
and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendour of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendour of earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendour, the moon another and the stars another. And star differs from star in splendour. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonour. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Is there a, if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have been born the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. We are surrounded about conversation about death at the moment. Every time we turn on the news, we can't escape death and the awkward questions that it poses. Into this anxious confusion, the Christian gospel rings out the glorious message of certain hope. Christ is risen. Death is defeated. Because Christ was raised, we too will be raised. At the time this was written, some Christians didn't understand the implications of this. They had a low view of the body, thinking that God is only interested in the soul. But God is interested in physical resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead. Our future hope is in the resurrection. The natural world provides us with examples of life from death. A seed must die to grow. I found a packet of seeds, mum's meadow garden seeds. I've got my pot ready to plant them. I've got my soil ready. I expect them to grow. They died first. The natural world provides examples of different kinds of bodies as well. Plants, animals. We don't have feathers like the birds. We don't have scales like the fish. This is God's creation. He has already shown us his many varieties of different bodies. It's no problem for him to create a physical new body at resurrection. In verses 42 and 43, we read about our bodies being weak and decaying. 
you know, age is the big horror of the world. I am quite worried about my roots right now. We are definitely aging. But we have the hope of a glorious, new, powerful body. And Jesus is our evidence of this. A new creation, and we will be like Christ. Just as we bear the image of Adam in our earthly body, we will one day bear the likeness of Christ. And we will be recognisable. The disciples recognised Jesus. We will be physical. He ate fish. He cooked fish. He talked to them. And he walked with them on the road to Emmaus. We will not be disembodied souls floating on a cloud playing harps. Jesus' resurrection is our guarantee. And this is our hope beyond the grave. This is our hope. We need to trust him. We need to trust him that the best is yet to come. Let's pray together. I've been thinking about the different prayer needs. We need to pray for our world. Still, there is so much sickness and so much confusion. We need to pray for our leaders. And pray for our NHS. I am acutely aware now of my son-in-law, Johnny, working on a COVID-19 ward in Birmingham, wearing the full regalia, doing 12-hour shifts overnight. There are many in our town who are working for the NHS, many of our families. I've also noticed in the news that they've said several times that the um, um, number of people who are in shut in in abusive situations has gone up 25 percent let's pray for these people who are in situations where they are fearful shut in their own homes and it's affecting their physical and mental health we continue to pray for hope into action especially praying for those tenants who have just found work but it's zero hour contracts so now they are confused and frightened as they have no job and let's pray for Jenny, who said goodbye to Jeremy yesterday at the funeral. And those amongst us who we know of who are also grieving. And let's give thanks for this wonderful Captain Tom Moore, who's made £18 million. What an amazing old man. Let's give thanks for people like that. We also thank God for this amazing vehicle of Zoom. I think of all the church groups that are using it, small groups, home groups, nurture groups, the way, rooted, the clergy, it goes on and on. I really need to be thankful that we have this. Pray also for the pastoral team who are working hard to keep everyone connected in our church. And I'll specifically mention Caroline and for the love of scrubs making um, outfits. Uh, scrubs outfits. So let's come to a time of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are intimately concerned in our lives. We thank you that after your resurrection, you cooked fish, you walked amongst your disciples. Lord, we thank you that through your Holy Spirit, we know you are with us. And you care about the details I've just mentioned. We pray for our world. We pray for our world leaders that they might have wisdom. That there might not be disagreements or dissension between them. Their aim together might be to, to bring about defeat of this illness. We pray for a turning to you in prayer. We thank you again for the NHS. We pray for those that we love or who are known to us working faithfully from the smallest jobs of cleaning the hospitals which is so vital to those who are caring on the front line. 
Well, Father, we thank you for our postmen, refuse collectors, people working in shops, people providing food. We thank you that their jobs are sacrificial for our good. And Lord, we pray for those who are shut up in home in a situation where they feel unsafe, both physically and mentally. We ask that the shaft of light that you bring in our lives might shine in their lives. People would turn to you for hope and protection. We pray that doors may be open where people can go to express their fear and ask for help. Lord, we pray for Jenny, that you would be her comfort and strength. And for her family. We thank you that Jeremy is with you, Lord Jesus. A man of faith. Sleep in you. And we pray for all those known to us who are grieving or sick or fearful or alone. For those in care homes. Our three care homes in Amble and the one in Polbrook. Thank you for the staff. We pray your blessing on their work and that you would keep these homes free from COVID-19. And Father, we thank you for positive things like Captain uh, Tom Moore, this dear old man. We thank you for Caroline and for the love of Scrubs. We thank you for Althea and her work with the pastoral team. We thank you for our clergy. Especially thank you for Martha and keeping the way and rooted together. Bless them all, Lord, we pray. Take us through this time so that we come out stronger and more united. And so, loving God, we hold before you, in the quietness, the people that we know who need your comfort, peace, love and joy to fill their hearts amidst this difficult time. And we rejoice in the gift of this new day. And we pray for the light of your presence with us, that our hearts may be on fire with love for you, sustaining us hour by hour. We offer all these prayers to you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I don't think I told you I'm Sue. I only think I told you I'm married to Mark. Bless you. Have a good day. Goodbye.